to the K to the K to the K. Hello, one and all. Welcome to the A to the K Wrestling Show. Welcome to the Ringside Report. Hey, love it, gravitas. Well, you know, we we do what we do what we do, you know. Um, because coming up tonight on the Ringside Report, <laughs> Goldberg, all elite. <laughs> Goldberg, <laughs> Goldberg is on the show. God, I hope not. <laughs> Uh, John, no, yeah, no, was John. Sorry, you confused yeah. me with the picture. John Cena has rejected Cody Rhodes' proposal. WWE planning to split the WWE and Universal Championships. Nia Jax, all elite. Yeah, I can do it. Everyone is now, apparently. <laughs> um, several female superstars unhappy with uh, fans and the terrible, terrible ways. I just wanted some signatures. <laughs> WWE looking to induct a referee in this year's Hall of Fame for the first time ever, Carl. First time, first time ever. ever. Uh, Mac Cardona set to debut on the Raw after WrestleMania. Because he's just edges me. <laughs> so I love it. Uh, anyway, Lita believes that wrestling, the future of wrestling should be genderless. Mm. Um, we have an update on Buff Bagwell, who's set to undergo some surgery. A college wrestler... I don't even know if it's a promo, but he says some stuff after winning some things, and uh, it's interesting. Yes, That's it right. You, yeah, you stick around for that headline. <laughs> um, Triple H has a big decision to make. Does Roman Reigns drop the belt at Mania or not? I take it gives his thoughts on the future of kayfabe. Mm, Anthony, when's all this coming it's up? It's all coming up right friggin' now. <laughs> You're so PG. What happened to us? Um, so the first one to talk about is Goldberg is a free agent, it's Anthony. Goldberg. He is free to do whatever the hell he wants. Any retirement home in the city, exactly. we'll be proud to have him. Now, this all started as a bit of a lull, and we were like, oh, could Goldberg potentially end up in AEW now that he's WWE? Uh, but it turns out Tony Khan is monitoring the situation. Uh, to which he, he is. quoted something along the lines of, uh, he's a very big name, uh, and obviously we are going to monitor that situation closely. I mean, they signed Jeff Jarrett, so I could see this. I mean, honestly, if you had to pick between Jarrett and Goldberg, you pick Goldberg, well, but, yeah. but I don't, ideally, what, uh, either. So, just, just no. I mean, if, if, you were to, if it were to happen, the only way I could see it being any good is if they just put him in massive like hoss matches if he makes Wardlow for example or Powerhouse Hobbs but I, I could be wrong on this but the rumour was always that Goldberg wouldn't um, had to go over at Saudi at Goldberg's request mm-hmm. for instance so would Goldberg's ego let him put someone over mm, I mean he did he did take the loss to Bobby he did so I'm not saying it's impossible I'm just yeah. just a thought you know I suppose if it makes sense but it's an interesting one with Goldberg. I, I kind of sympathised with him originally when he wanted to come back um, and wrestle in front of his kid and all that good stuff. You know, we're dads. That would be awesome. We'd love to probably do the same. Uh, but he then just, you know, outstayed his welcome somewhat. <laughs> and he was still there and he was getting wins, which was a uh, yeah, whole different yeah. ballpark. So it would... I Let's face it. Sting's already there, right? They're, they're going to they're gonna make him clash with Sting, aren't they? WCW revival Maybe. kind of thing. Maybe. I mean, Hogan will probably rock up at this point and we'll have NWO. I imagine. I watch Shaw Walton well up to these days. Well, yeah. Oh, um, eggs. <laughs> eggs. <laughs> yeah, the, Sorry, things, the things we do. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Would I want to see it? No. Can I see it happening? Absolutely. It's a shame to think what AEW has become, man. Like, what have man. I become? But if you think about when it first started and stuff, and it, it was kind of an alternative, and we absolutely loved it, and you know we're not being bitter. I don't think WWE is amazing either. Let's be honest. But it's obviously better. Um, you know, it's got more compelling storylines. If you I will. really, what frustrates me more, right, is people were calling it like TNA, uh, like two point oh and stuff like that from the off, and yeah. it's like they've slowly just started justifying the haters and saying. But you were hating it before this was the case. Yeah. And now I feel like you're right, and I don't like that. <laughs> people, people do genuinely just love to hate it, but, you know, it is it is getting a bit silly now. I mean, Jeff Jarrett was was the, the straw that broke the camel's back for me. Yeah. Um, I know, that, that hurt you. That it hurt did. You. I, 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 I have to watch that guy now, and it's like, I prefer it when I didn't, you know? So mm-hmm. I hear you. 
Yeah. So Goldberg, potentially all elite soon. Cool. Mm. So, Carl, this one kind of amused me. So, Cody Rhodes uh, recently upon his return. Obviously, we had John Cena in the in the WWE for a recent episode of Raw. Forgive me, I can't remember which one. Uh, and it's been it. Uh, Cody's basically mentioned that um, you know while he was speaking to Cena, um, he said to him basically, "If he ever does another match, uh, he'd like it to be with me." Well, Cody, not me. <laughs> Cody, you? right? Yeah, that'd be weird, wouldn't it? Yeah. Just kick his ass. It's yeah, like, oh, okay. fine. <laughs> um, and um, basically, John Cena's response was, "I can't promise that." <laughs> I mean, to be fair, this this, oh. this altercation happened on the stage, didn't it? It was when John Cena was leaving, and he was like, uh, "You know, I'm going to bring out such and such." He brought Cody out, and Cody was mm. there, and he was like, he whispered something in his ear, and yeah. I, 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 I caught think, as I understand say, it, I like, promise yeah, that. as I understand, I think that that audio has been relatively clear, which right. is why Cody spoke on it and said, like, yeah, I think you can pretty much hear what he said. Yeah, but uh, that's what he was asking him for, like, if if he comes back for another match, can it be with Cody? And he's like, no, well, not no, <laughs> but can't promise that. Effectively. Which, you know, kind of hurts. Hmm. Um, obviously, it's not like there's any sort of bad relationship between them. They go back a long way. Quite recently, John uh, was at the Nightmare Factory, mm-hmm. uh, which is Cody's school. So, you know, by no means is it like a, a slight against Cody. I think it's probably more just that John's a company guy and he can't promise him anything that it would be a company decision, I suppose. Don't know where you're going then. John's a cut. Co- Company, company guy, guy. Um, yeah I think it'd be more like if they said to John come back for this he's not going to go well no I promise Cody he's going to do what's best for business isn't he so yeah I mean he has alluded to though that he's potentially going to hang up the the armbands and the cap soon and Shame. expose his bald spot to the world no but if he has his last match with Austin Theory I think that's putting over the future I so think this is the problem fine. you know like if he if like he does that and then kind of hangs up his Jorts, right? Let's <laughs> pick something else. Out. Um, then it, it'd be kind of um, like he'd kind of taint it, putting over theory mm. to then come back and have a match with Cody. All due respect to yeah, Cody, it would. And the Cody only, doesn't really need it. Yeah, not the only way I'd like to see him come back, but in an ideal world, I'd love to see him come back and fight Kurt Angle. I I would love that. Just saying. Yeah. Just saying. Um, so yeah, fascinating. John Cena says no to Cody Rhodes. <laughs> You ain't gonna see him. Yeah. Uh, so this next one is an interesting one. Uh, it's something we've spoken about for well a while now, but WrestleVotes, uh, who's pretty much reliable um, as a source. <laughs> pretty. Yeah, I think that's the the tagline, isn't yeah. it? WrestleVotes. Pretty, pretty much, much reliable. reliable most of the time. Uh, <laughs> gave an interview. I think it was Give Me Sport or something like that, um, and basically said that Triple H has got one final mess to clean up. That Vince McMahon left behind. I love the title situation. They call it a mess. Like they unified the titles like a hundred times. Yeah. Well, and this time it's a mess. Yeah, Sorry, you, you can kind of see where he's coming from to a degree. So he basically said that when they did the Roman versus Brock match at Mania, and they decided to do title versus title, they didn't have any plan of what to do after that. It made sense as a big marquee match as a way mm. to get more eyeballs on it because it's a match that people have seen before. But they didn't really have a, an end goal in sight, and now it's got to the point where. You know, Roman Reigns has been champion for God knows how long, and it would be beneficial to have more championships. I mean, I personally disagree. Hmm. I don't think you need more championships. I think no matter what, they've got a problem in the sense that how do you fill the the reign of Roman? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, be, it, it is a historic run. So hmm. how do you how do you follow that up? Yeah. Right. And the, I I feel like if they're gonna split them, it's just gonna be a case of like we'll, we'll play it safe. Because then we've got two chances to get it right, you know, and then they can they can do the Cody thing, but then they can also mess around. And I'm like, do you need both championships, or should we have one? Cha- I I think drop the whole undisputed WWE universe, just go back to the WWE title, give Cody his wish, and have the winged eagle come back mm-hmm. and fuck the rest of it. Yeah, right. But they probably are going to split the titles. Well, yeah, it's, it's it goes back to that whole, you know, our our thoughts are very clear on this. There shouldn't really be a brand split anymore. Nope. It should just be this is the roster. This is we're going to put on the best show every week. Yep. Um, in which case you wouldn't need multiple titles anyway. But I think yep. where it's all come from is well, we've got Raw, and we've got SmackDown, and the champion isn't always on both shows. So how do we have a main event well, thing going on? According to Cody, he wants to be a fighting champion, so well, he will be on every show. He'll even be on Heat <laughs> and and what's the other velocity? Yeah, doing that that real Charlotte Flair thing where he's <laughs> Why is he on NXT now? Everywhere. But yeah, I don't know. It's it's a fascinating one. It it has felt with Roman obviously having the titles for so long, it's felt a bit like, well, there's not a lot else going on because you know, 
the IC title's been okay, the US title's been okay, but it hasn't really felt like there's a, a super main event picture. Mm. So it's one of them. Do you split them and obviously have more main event stars all competing for the title, or do you combine it into one? And... I think if it were me, I'd say combine it into one and then put a bit of faith in your mid-card. Yeah. Because there's been, like, I think this is the first WrestleMania where the, the titles have been actually defended on Mania. Correct me if I'm wrong, in a I long mean, time. The Intercontinental title definitely hadn't been defended in fucking years. I felt like it was almost a sweep as like ever, but yeah. I mean, like, re- like in recent years. Yeah. Um, and for me, if you can, like, because not every pay per view needs to have that gravitas that Mania has. So if you have, uh, this may be a polarizing opinion, but if you have a pay per view where the main title match for that night is the US title, is that a problem? Do you know what? To be fair, they had that for Elimination Chamber. And it went. And it was okay. It was good. Yeah. You know, the field was strong. Uh, so, and because you, you obviously you still have the problem of like people who aren't really main event ready, who need TV time. So, mm-hmm. okay, the champ has a little bit of people forget like way back when, like possibly Hogan, maybe slightly before Hogan, you wouldn't have your champion all the time. No, wouldn't be fair. there every week. One of the other challenges though is you've obviously got two women's championships, you've got two tag team championships. Well, fuck all that as well. So yeah, one women's title, <laughs> one set. Of t- the tag titles are unified anyway. Do well, the same with them. That's obviously what we would do because we just have it be the one show. Wouldn't be a draft, uh, but mm. you know, apparently they're doing a draft after Mania. So splits everything. Yeah, cool. So we'll see. They want to do it apparently. We will see. So, Carl, Nia Jax, Nia Jax, right? She was on a, recently on a K&S virtual signing, whatever that is, um, and was asked about possibility of joining AEW, which uh, apparently she's had quite a bit as a question. Uh, and her response is an interesting one. She says, and I quote, I actually would. Uh, join AEW. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I keep getting asked that question, and I usually say no, but I actually would. I'm really good friends with Soraya. Soraya? Soraya. Soraya? Soraya. Uh, I love what she's doing there. I recently met Nyla Rose. It would be kind of cool and add something different. So whilst this has been no sort of comments or suggestion from the AEW side of things, Nia certainly will be up for the challenge. So, uh, what do you make of this? Do you think, uh, do you think we could see Nia in, uh, in an AEW ring anytime soon? I mean, the other thing you said was an important part of that is <laughs> nothing from the AEW side. Which, yeah. I mean, Tony Khan, if he was showed any remote interest in something, he would, at the first opportunity, be like, "Yes, we want to do this." But he's like heavily like monitoring the Goldberg situation yeah. right now. Exactly. <laughs> well, it's not mentioned any monitoring of any kind of the Nia one. Sadly. I don't know. Uh, it's tough, isn't it? Obviously, you want to have the best women's division possible. She had something different there. And, you know, who wouldn't want to see Nia versus Nyla? But well, exactly. after that match, what, what matches do you make? I mean, Jade possibly, Cargill. I was going to say possibly Jade. The trouble is, all due respect to Nia, she's not got the best in-ring history. Hmm. So you're not going to expect a great deal of matches in terms of quality. You're going to expect some well, heavy hitting bumps and stuff but yeah. not going to be I the... don't think the AEW fan base would take well to her well that's the thing it's it's kind of yeah but then again I don't think he'd take well to Goldberg but what do I know mm-hmm. he seems to have taken Jeff Jarrett under the dirty mm-hmm. smelly wing so. I think um, Goldberg just wants to headbutt a set of different doors and so <laughs> I understand that <laughs> I love it that's how the, the whole thing came about he's like but there's so many doors out there that I've not had the chance to headbutt <laughs> Yeah. He'd have a field day in B&Q, that fella. <laughs> yes, he would. Or oh, Home Depot for our American Sorry. fans. Sorry. Um, so this next one is an interesting one. Now, there's been a barrage of... Ooh. Fancy words. Oh, you know. Cody fan. A plethora. Yeah. I don't want to sound apropos, <laughs> but there's been a barrage of um, tweets and posts lately uh, from a lot of female superstars who basically have taken umbrage with um, fans. In various ways. So we saw a video get released not too long ago of Liv Morgan being absolutely swarmed at an airport by about 20, 30 people, you know, basically pushing all fucking Funko Pops, figures, posters, everything in her face. And Liv being obviously awesome, you know, stopped and signed all of them, even though you could tell she was kind of like, you know, like this is getting a bit of a joke. We also saw Rey Mysterio recently speak out about stuff as well, where he was like, I can't sign this thing. Rhea Ripley... Uh, took to Twitter to say... Ray took a little bit of shit for that as well. I thought you handled that really well. Yeah. Sorry, come on. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, you're right. Uh, but Rhea took to Twitter and basically said, like, she's had enough now. She was getting followed, not just in the airport, but outside the airport of people trying to get her to sign things and, that, and you know, that kind of thing. And it's become this this 
fucking dirty black market at the minute of people just hounding wrestlers in airport with loads of figures that they want to sell on. And it's like, there's no real love there. You, like, you could kind of understand it if there was like a super fan and they absolutely love that person and, you know, want to just get an the autograph. The trouble is them trying to navigate between the, the money grabbers and the super fans, isn't it? Yeah. And I think, was it Ria who actually said something like, unless it's like a picture, a of, picture us. of us yeah. together? Which to be fair is obviously a very difficult thing to do. It will but alienate they, some genuine But to be fans. fair though, it seems like if you went up to Ria, admittedly, pick a reasonable moment, not just mm. whenever you see her. Like, yeah. I appreciate you're on the toilet, but come, you know, none of that, <laughs> right? But yeah. I think if you asked her for a selfie, she'd be up for that. Yes, it's the right. money grabbing element, that, isn't it? That's what I, that's what I was going to mention. Is you know, if you were a genuine fan, like who who has all? And I don't want to piss anyone off who loves autographs because people are collectors, right? Of course. But the the selfie is the autograph of the 21st century. Damn it! So if you love somebody, like, and you're like, oh my god, this is a hero, or you know, I want to get, you'd want to get a picture with that person, right? Yeah. So well, I, I would like we, well we no, we have yeah. we've we've been to conventions and you can go over to the table and get a signature on a pre thingy picture mm. or something of your choice or you can go and get a picture with them. Guess what we picked? Yeah, right. Because we're fans. We and don't I get it. If you appreciate done, the signatures, right? you appreciate the signatures. That's fine. Yeah. But um, these guys, like you say, clearly like you've got X amount of Funko Pops that they want to sell on eBay. Yeah. It? It's basically what CM Punk said about 10 years ago. Well, exactly. and nothing's changed because the fan base hasn't changed. Yeah. But well, there you go. But, I mean, uh, it's, it's just... weird for me. Yeah. I have the opposite problem. Mm. I'm at airports, like, hassling people with merchandise and signatures, yeah. like, yeah. come on, you yeah. want these, right? It's, it's <laughs> Got weird. Got to flog those into the KT's I know, right? somehow. And, uh, but, yeah, I'm, so... I'm, like, just, like, in people's faces with my <laughs> merch, but, yeah, hey, whatever, you know. So, I mean, obviously, Rhea i come out with that as well, and it obviously sounds awful, but then Alicia Atout posted something as well. She was at, like, a fan signing or something like that, and basically just... You signed the fans? Well, <laughs> I think that's what some of them were expecting, ah. to be fair, because uh, I don't know the tweet verbatim, but she said something along the lines of people need to kind of understand boundaries and be respectful and things like that. So it sounds like people have either got a little bit handsy or a little bit kind of, you know just too close and too into personal space like people who go and do these meet and greets and that kind of thing it's not an invitation for you to fucking you know get up on them and you know get in get their personal space like uh, such a no, I'm Sean Connery up in their personal <laughs> space but yeah it sounds like it's been a, a pretty awful time at the minute so if anyone is watching this who is one of them people just Fucking pack it in, just will you? Calm yourself. Um, like we get. I it. mean, it's all well and good, Carl. But what am I going to do with these fifty Funko Pops that now don't have signatures and I can't sell? Well, you know, it's fine. We'll, we'll forge them and it'll be okay. But no, it's a uh, yeah. Seriously, just people need to just just respect them. They are people at the end of the day. Um, and obviously, you're a massive fan. You see them on TV, but I just think like paparazzi's bad enough when just general people and fans start doing that like there's fucking no hope for anyone is there mm -hmm. so like literally they'll have to start traveling everywhere with security and stuff yeah. it's, I, I understand it's I, I, I understand the tribulations of fame oh, I do yeah. and my my sympathies to them indeed yeah. indeed <laughs> um, I shouldn't make lights it is a genuine problem and people need to chill but here's what you don't need to chill about Carl Upon the recent announcement of Andy Kaufman being mm -hmm. inducted into the Hall of Fame this year as the celebrity inductee, yep. uh, for those of you who don't understand Andy Kaufman's connection <clears throat> to the WWE and wrestling in general, I encourage you to watch Man on the Moon. Yes. Man on the Moon. Pretty good Jim portrayal Perry. of it. Yeah. Mm. Um, but nevertheless, uh, on the back of that announcement, they mentioned that um, a referee is going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. They haven't announced who, but they have made it clear that it's someone who's beloved in the industry. Um, oh, I probably shouldn't have chosen Al Hebner for the picture then. Savage. Uh, and then screw Brett. Sorry. Yeah, but it's not over it. There's, there's a reason why we didn't. There's meet a him. lot of people who loved him. Just saying for that, you know, Sean being one of them. Um, anyway, so it's uh, it's going to be a very well known referee who's going to be inducted. But the interesting thing with this is this is the first time a referee has been inducted into the Hall of Fame. It's mad that really. And uh, if this is something that's been asked for in the past by both wrestlers and mm. fans, like something that's been like suggested time and time again. So it's nice to see that they're actually going to pull the trigger on it this year. Yeah. And I'm super intrigued to see who it is. Well, yeah, joking aside, L. Hebner is probably, you know, one of the first names you think of when you think of referees. I mean, I'd be very surprised if it's not L. You know, you've got Nick Patrick, who's more WCW. You've got Lil Nate, Charles Robinson. Uh, Charles Robinson. Lil Nate. Who I think is retired recently. You got Mike Kyoda, but I don't think it will be him because I think he's. I think a solid guess would be El Hebner, to be fair. Yeah. So I don't know, but uh, I love your joke, so I'll, I'll let you say it. it's there in black and white. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, yeah. You know. 
because the the rings. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, uh, moving on. I thought we weren't doing the job. I know, but it was so good. It's my <laughs> favourite one. Right. So the next one to talk about is the Raw after WrestleMania is always much anticipated. Anthony, <gasps> we expect a reset of storylines. We expect surprises, new things, and we might also be getting a wild Matt Cardona. We may. We may. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, though, this is like Triple H going back to what people loved about him when he first took over. Let's bring people back. Yeah. All people. Loads of people. Yeah, like, maybe. But um, this one again came from WrestleVotes, uh, who in that Give Me Sport interview said that over the last couple of years, the Raw After Mania has felt a little bit flat and they've not really kind of hyped up all the surprises and stuff. And he said, while well, this year we're not expecting to see loads and loads of debuts and loads and loads of surprises, they are going to plan you know, a couple. So it could be like a one NXT call-up, but also maybe a surprise such as Matt Cardona's return. And obviously with Chelsea Green being back in the company, it's been anticipated that Matt will obviously follow suit. Look, once his if you want to surprise finish. me, you want to surprise me and you bring Matt back, right? Bring in Joe Hendry. Because okay. Joe Hendry's up more over than he is, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that, to be fair. With me, he is, damn it. Right, uh, maybe. But we need, we need another Brit to support here, well, Carl. Yeah, there is that aspect to it. But if you recall, in my wild predictions that we did at the start of the year, who did I say Cody was going to have a feud with in WWE? And you poo-pooed that? <laughs> Poo. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. Matt Cardona, of course. Oh, okay. So, I thought you said Zack Ryder. Well, fuck you. You know it's the same thing. So, yeah. Uh, I'll be happy because that will mean it's another one checked off the list. So, yeah. yeah. Um, BS, man. But, yeah. Would you, know, would, would you guys uh, like to see Matt Cardone? The only return? thing, and I mentioned this previously, the only thing is he's got over being a more edgy version of himself. And now he's going to have to tone it down. He was a more edgy version when he was an edgehead, sure. <laughs> hey. But now he's going to have to tone it down to be in WWE. And I am just wonder whether that's going to fly. He's not going to be the Mac the owner that's on the Indies. Well, no, obviously not. Just like Chelsea Green wasn't a hot mess. She came in as a Karen. So it will be a change to his gimmick in some yeah. way. But but like like right now, and I do hope it works, the Chelsea Green thing remains to be seen, doesn't it? That It's a risk she's took. Mm. And it's whether Matt's going to take that risk because he's, he's, yeah. he has really I think marketed he, like, himself. If he does come over there, I think they will draw upon the fact that them two did team up in AW or like elsewhere. And he was. He did go away to the Indies and he had a very similar story to Cody. And it all writes itself. Yeah. So... The runaway. Yeah. Destination known for Mac hey. Cardona. So, Carl, here's an interesting one for you. And this, uh, I'm going to tread very carefully on this one because I read a headline about uh, Lita being in a conversation about a few things. You're talking about the attitude area, a few to attrition. So, a very interesting interview if you want to go look for it because I'm not going to tell you where it is. Um, <laughs> but one of the comments they asked her about the, the, the future of women's wrestling and whether it should be genderless. And a response. Did, and this did, is the, they, did they specifically ask her whether it should well, be gender? They, they sort of separated the whole interview right. with her into segments. So the area of here was like, they clearly asked her some sort of question because she's put, to me, the next barrier is genderless. Right. So it feels like they have targeted the question to get that response. But the the, the sort of clickbaity element of it is, Lisa says that the, the future of women's wrestling should be genderless, right? And to be honest, a little bit of me was like, because I thought, and this is no, well, it, this is where it might be a little controversial, right? Mm-hmm. I, I'm, we, we are massive advocates of women's wrestling, right? <laughs> Ready to push the red cancel button. <sighs> I know, right? But do you remember when Ronda was like, ah, I think we should drop the word women from the women's title yeah. and, like, and was yeah. acting like that was progressive. Which I think and it was I'm ridiculous, like, yeah. I'm like, and this is where it might, like, I, I'm not saying Ronda was wrong, you allowed your opinion, but at the same time, it's like, what does that achieve? Mm-hmm. It's still the same title. It's still treated at the same level. You just say, I want to remove the word women from it to mm-hmm. cause more confusion, basically, right? Yeah. So I was like, this is going to be another one of them, isn't it? Make make her from genderless. Let's not have uh, women's and men's. But it's actually, when you read it, it's not. And I'm like, go, Lisa, because I, I understand the point. And this is what I think the, the point of genderless should be in terms of wrestling. So what she said is, I don't care how you identify. We're just going to go out there and show out. And it's not like... What women do we have on the show? Where this? Where's the representation? Um, no fair game. Everyone go grab your spots, and we go out there. Some nights that might mean eight women's matches on the card. Some night, nights that might mean two. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's the point. That is the point right there. That gender should become irrelevant on a booking and structural level. To go right, it doesn't matter 
it matters the storyline matters not the gender so you don't have to go let's make sure we tick a box yeah and let's do the bare minimum you do what works best for the story because again as she's mentioned they, they are, again a further quote she's put um she doesn't want it to feel like there's a box to check to make sure they represent women they're going to be represented because they're good and that is the point that is yeah. the point we've seen some fantastic women dressers out there one of the best things in WWE at the minute is Rhea Ripley yeah she is the best thing in Judgment Day yeah you said right. that, like you said all along she's the leader of that faction exactly mm. so to me if they just take the lens off and go right it's just about who's over and what stories are going on yeah then Which, you'll, you'll probably naturally represent women yeah, it comes back right, anyway. to the Lita and Trish main event of Raw. The reason they main evented wasn't because let's give women a chance. It was because that was the hottest thing that they actually had at the time. You got that and right. they deserved it. And right? this is the thing. And a lot of the and guys backstage apparently got pissed off, according to JR. He spoke about it recently and he yeah. was like, people weren't happy. At the end of the day, if it's the hottest feud going or it's one of the hot feuds going, it deserves the time. Yeah. And I agree with that. Like, it, it shouldn't be a tick box exercise of, well, how much representation have we got? It should literally just be what's the best thing we exactly. can put out there right and now and if you if you look at it like that and don't be wrong it's difficult to make sure people are being fair mm-hmm. because I do there has been a large element over the years of let's tick a box that's why the it took so long to main events that's why I like iconic first ever women's hell in a cell and first ever yeah. women's chamber because they didn't put them in those situations yeah. because it was skewed to that well we ticked the box we put the women's match yeah. on now we can do the other stuff yeah. right and they need to get rid of that they need to get rid of that perspective and just look at what's going on yeah. right if it was possible You'd write the stories without knowing who you're writing them for. I know that sounds daft, but if you just write the stories mm-hmm. and then they get assigned to whoever, yeah, then you'd never know who you're writing for and therefore you wouldn't write with any bias. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I know that's impossible because you need to know the character to write the story. Yeah. But, but yeah, the sense of it makes sense, yeah. doesn't it? But yeah, it's, it is a, it's a hard... Like for me, it's controversial. I think the whole women's evolution was fabricated. It was a tick box exercise by the company. It was yeah. very much the fans were going, you need to give the women more time. They are like, we'll listen to you. We're going to give them the, their own pay-per-view. And it was just, it wasn't sincere. Well, I actually, and again, slightly controversial take, because I know a lot of people love the women's Revo- uh, revolution pay-per-view. Evolution, sorry, revolution, pay-per-view. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it was it was unique and it was nice to see. But having a women's only pay-per-view, I think, is almost opposite to the problem, isn't it? Because yeah. you've gone, well, we don't want you on the real pay-per-views. We're going to give you your own, so you, well, exactly. you all shut up. And even more And it's like, no, you put them in big spots on the existing pay-per-views. Yeah. If you did women's mania, people yeah. aren't going to be happy that they've got their own WrestleMania. They're going to be pissed off you didn't include them in yeah. the real one. More controversial, potentially, right? There's a big ongoing dispute at the minute internally in WWE about what should main event night one of mania. Should it be Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair, which has had practically no build-up? Or should it be Sammy and KO versus the Usos? And for me, it should be Sammy, KO, and the Usos. Unfortunately, yeah. Because it's become a tick-box exercise to say, well, we have to have women main event a night at WrestleMania. Yeah. Why? But again, fundamentally, this Equally, is... Equally, if the, if the two... If they, they had women's stories, they had two, three women's stories that were phenomenal, they should main event both nights. Exactly. But the problem is, there hasn't been. But the problem... <laughs> well, the problem here is, for Mania is they've built up and told stories for KO and Sammy and the Usos and Roman and Cody. Yeah. Right? So you've wrote your main events without writing your main events. What they haven't done is built up Rhea and Charlotte sufficiently. If they'd have actually put the build into that, and there was there was like hype and build, yeah. then you'd have totally go, yeah, it should be the main event. Yeah. But why haven't they put the effort into building yeah. that? And they Bianca, already know. Bianca they already write the stories. It's been even a terrible yeah. build. It's and this awful. is where you go, maybe there is a problem in that sense because they could have built this up so that it makes sense being a pay-per-view. But now, now it's a question, isn't it, of going, which should be the main event? It's a question because we haven't built up Rhea and Charlotte the way we should. Yeah. I say we, you know, them. Don't well, we exactly. Be... But I agree with what Lisa said, to be fair. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. totally on point, yeah. Uh, the next one, short and sweet. Uh, we've had a bit of an update from uh, Buff Bagwell. So he's reported he's now uh, six months clean and sober. So obviously he had that setback, didn't he, after the whole DDP um, helping him out thing. He uh, had to go back into rehab. And he's now said that he's uh, six months clean, but he's got one more thing left to do, and that is to undergo some knee surgery. So he's planning to have that at the end of the month. And obviously, we you know, wish him a, a speedy, well, a successful sur- surgery and a speedy recovery off the back of that. But indeed. Hopefully, indeed. you know, his sobriety and his happiness may long continue. Mm. It's, a, it's a tough road. Um, yeah. You know, he's walking. And again, uh, just any opportunity we get to say it, just DDP, what a fucking, what a man. 
Just yeah, yeah. what a man. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> the, 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 amount that careers, the amount of careers he saved is, uh, you yeah. know, admirable. Ledge. So. Hey, Ledge. Indeed. So, Carl, just a quick one again. This is slightly out of the realms of what we normally talk about, but I was like, what the fuck? Um, so, uh, a young uh, Penn State athlete named Aaron Brooks uh, recently won his third consecutive individual NCAA title. Impressive feat, to say the least. So, was being interviewed by ESPN after the fact and um, decided to go on a little bit of a rant. And it's like... Oh, it's probably not good. Right? So he goes... Um, so they asked him about, um, obviously, his victory and so on like that. And he starts talking about Christ, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. If you, you know, if you're a religious person, you're a religious person. But um, he basically has a pop at Islam as well, which I think is where this controversy has come from. So he said, he said, it's everything. Christ's resurrection is everything, Brooks said. Uh, he Not just his life, his death and resurrection. You can only get that through him. The Holy Spirit, only through him, no false prophets, no Muhammad or anyone else, only Jesus Christ himself, right? Which, again, if you're religious, that's fine, but that feels a little heavy-handed for you've just won your third NCAA, NCAA champion. Yeah. How do you feel? Where did that come from? Like, <laughs> well, let me talk to you about Jesus. It seemed a bit mm. extreme anyway, and um, a lot of people, and it's, it's ended up on uh, getting a bit of controversy and a bit of heat on Twitter. ESPN shared the interview initially and then quickly pulled it down when it was getting the controversy because they were like, basically, why have you took a shot? At, why why we call him Muhammad a false prophet? Like, everyone's mm. entitled to their own beliefs, which they, yeah, definitely are. Um, so it seems you might be catching a little bit of um, controversy here. Now, I don't know what the consequence or result of that may be, but, uh, I, you know, I was looking through, I saw it, I thought, well, let's, uh, let's throw it in the headlines. It's wrestling related and it's, uh, yeah. it's kind of fucking crazy. Yeah, I can't understand <laughs> why he would say such a thing, but I'm also not a massive fan of cancel culture either, so he should probably have yeah. some media training on what to say yeah, or not I'm, to I'm say. I'm not a fan on religious rants though either. It's well, like, yeah, but... You know, don't force your faith on other people. Well, it's, exactly. Uh, um, it's never been a good look on anyone. Yeah. So. But I mean, as, as you said, people are entitled to opinion. If that that's, that's theirs, you know, so be it. But I don't think they need to go on record in an interview and start bashing people like just yeah. you know keep your opinions to yourself damn it indeed so this next one uh, kind of stems off what we were talking about before we're splitting the titles really so according is it again to wrestle votes maybe let me just double check who it is who actually said this wrestle votes is everywhere um, um no wrestle talk wrestle yep. something so it is wrestle talk who came up with this and basically saying that at the moment there seems to be a, basically the decision has not yet been made in terms of who is going to walk out of Wrestlemania as the WWE Undisputed Universal Champion I'll be honest that concerns me mm. yeah I don't, I don't like when you fly by the seat of your pants like that that yeah. says to me right, you really don't know what you're going to do the Raw after Mania then do you well yeah but again, conversely, I saw somewhere as well uh, that apparently someone was, a news was making the rounds that Triple H has got six months worth of TV planned out or something like that. Just without a champion, apparently. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> I don't see how they can go hand in hand personally. But it's a fascinating one, though, because I think everybody is expecting Cody to just win at Mania now and Roman to go and take some time off. And, I mean, well deserved. And WrestleVotes in his interview did say that it's confirmed Roman is set to take a, a lengthy hiatus after he, after he loses the titles. But he also followed that up by saying that's if slash when he loses the titles. So it's mm. no guarantee, yeah, because they don't know what they're doing. I get the difficulty because they want him to hit that almighty 1,000 plus milestone, don't they? Yeah. And he'd need to go past Mania for that. Yeah. It's, it is a very tricky situation in terms of what you do. Obviously, it, it makes sense both ways because... If Cody loses, then he's failed at his challenge. He hasn't finished the story. What does that all mean? Compelling TV, yada, yada. But then if anyone's going to beat him, like who else? You know, Cody's story who makes the most sense. Cody. So it's a fascinating one. But it's also, as you said, concerning, but also fascinating that they haven't made that decision yet. Yeah. Like it's leaving it pretty up to the wire, which Indeed. means are they going to, you know, like imagine how you'd feel if you were Cody. They just don't pull the trigger. Does that mean they're not going to ever? You come back to win the belt. I mean, this is the thing. Like, this is the perfect time to pull the trigger. As much as we have had concerns about the building, like, okay, this could be the story over really quite quick and what's going to happen after that. That doesn't mean that the story shouldn't have the correct result, which would be him winning and yeah. climbing that mountain. So. Well, exactly. So, yeah, up to now, they do not know what's going to happen at WrestleMania. They're just as in the dark as us. 
So, Carl, speaking of being in the dark, let's go to the dead man. Mark Undertaker Calloway, very recently, <laughs> uh, was on um, Chris Van Vliet's Insight. Hi, hey, Chris. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, a very good interview, by the way, if you've not seen it and uh, you're watching us instead of watching Undertaker talk, I don't know what's going on there. But if you haven't seen it, go and watch it because it's fascinating. But one of the topics they covered was, was kayfabe mm. and the importance of kayfabe, obviously, Undertaker being someone who's who's been very big on kayfabe, and he goes into a, a lot of talk about how Vince McMahon sort of wanted him to do the Taker Rooney, and like there was a lot of pressure on the night, mm. uh, on a particular night to do the Taker Rooney to the point that apparently Vince told uh, Big Show to to go and get him back, and he said it's along the lines of like um, you might eat me or something like that, but I will punch you <laughs> when he was trying to go to the back. Um, and he's like, that's the one, one of the very, very few times that he disagreed with Vince and didn't do it. And he won. He said, because uh, mm-hmm. if you tell Vince McMahon you don't want to do something, that becomes his mission. Yeah. Um, and he says, it's one of the very few times he actually won. Um, so he's, he's big on, and this was all about being big on kayfabe. And he said like, whilst it's one of them things now for the audience and I am paraphrasing but one of the things the audience is kind of in on it mm. like he's always wrestled and I found this fascinating because I never really thought about it but he's right and he said he's always wrestled to try and sort of keep kayfabe and try and keep that believability in the sense of like he wouldn't do an old school mm. like straight away without working the arm he'd work the arm so it becomes a bit more feasible that he could yeah. get up on top of the, the reason why he's, why, why he's making yeah, that risk why he's yeah. able to do it and yeah. they're not stopping him because he's worked the arm throughout the match mm. and stuff like that and it's like keeping those importances were always important to him, even though as time's gone on, it, like the audience is kind of in on the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and he sort of mentioned basically about like the Aston, I suppose is kayfabe going away. Is that like, because of the way the world is now and because of the way wrestling is now, is that like a, a sort of a done deal? And he's basically said, no, he thinks there's still a place for kayfabe. There are some people uh, never specifically mentioned names, but like I'll mention one of being MJF where, you know, keeping kayfabe, it works for a particular character and they stay in gay fabe, they stay in character and it works for them. So mm-hmm. there is a place for it whilst the world is a, a sort of different in terms of, you know, he, he admitted like I'm yeah. a dinosaur and, you <laughs> yeah. know, it's the, a lot the wrestling to business is different now, yeah. but it, there are places where it can work and yeah. it does work. Yeah. It's harder, which is a fair point. Harder in today's society when obviously everyone's got to have a social media account anyway to help the brand and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it becomes more difficult. But I but remember. All in all, seeing... I just wanted to sort of pick on that bit, but the whole interview is really yeah. fascinating. I, I mean, anytime on the take. Have you, have you stuff, seen obviously. the video of uh, of them all in the ring and all doing the spinner and Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's... the one he's talking about. With Booker T, I think says I think oh, I think the audience want to see a Taker Rooney and they yeah, start trying yeah, to encourage him and yeah. then Vince comes out and does one Vince, Triple H does Vince one is, is, like fucking, is just ridiculous oh, next, yeah. next level hilarity even even Jerry the King Lawler did one he did like a you know whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah it's oh, uh, yeah quality stuff man I know weird to to hear from Mark the Undertaker Calloway yeah talking so, about kayfabe indeed uh, yeah so another fun filled episode of the news uh, I would have said short and sweet but we've never been 40 minutes but we Yay. had 12 that's what we do we like to talk um, as you may see not promoting many things at the minute we decided to freshen it up a little bit but we are still going to promote we obviously you may have seen us drinking a little bit of top rope uh, this week's uh, we're actually revisiting an old fave the uh, magnificent mango pale ale yes so we've drank this before under a different brand, and obviously they've rebranded. We've got the bottles, we've got the new style, which it looks fantastic. Mm-hmm. I love this beer, so oh, I wanted yeah. to do this again. We wanted to, uh, you know, promote it on Top Row Tuesday under the rebrand, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, I've I've given me thoughts on it before, but I absolutely love the mango flavor running Indeed. through the beer. It's a delicious beer. Second time I'm trying it, we it. we we still have the same opinion. But yeah, we've got a lot more tasty ones coming your way as well. We just did another little order on there, so we've got uh, oh yes, some Transformers inspired ones. Transformers. We've got a got a few different ones there, uh, so. Yeah, look out for them. Um, and also, you can get our stuff on Pro Wrestling Tees as well. That's true. All the latest designs on there as well. And uh, yeah, thank you to anyone who has subscribed. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. Give the video a like. And uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Yeah, and right. until next time, we will say bye. <laughs>